As wonderful as Valentine's Day can be if you're in love, it can be a little tough for those who are going it alone. Our cover story is reported by Susan Spencer. An avid musician, John Francis likes to let his banjo do the talking. And at one point, that was the only talking he did. So your 27th birthday rolls around. Yeah. What happened? I said, you know, I have to do something really different. I'm not going to speak for a day. A day? A day. Just a day. But that one day turned into two days, then a week, then a month. And finally, I can't get my head around this. You did not say one word to another human being for 17 years. Yeah, literally. That's right. At 27, Francis decided to stop talking, period. And he stuck with that decision until he was 44 years old. There were about four times when, by accident, I did speak. When I bumped into someone at the grocery store and I said, excuse me, and I went... Or I was watching, I was, Charlton Heston was on television. Behold his mighty hand. Hold his hand down, the Red Sea parted, and, and I just went, oh my God. He spent those quiet years hiking, camping, and making art. He says he didn't really miss conversation. It wasn't working for him anyway. I would listen just enough to think I knew what someone was going to say, and then I'd stop listening, which, in effect, cuts communication. That feeling of being disconnected went hand in hand with something bigger, loneliness. I think I was lonely before I started this in the sense that uh, I didn't want to be alone with myself. And that makes you lonely. But anyone who feels lonely is far from alone. According to a recent study, nearly half of Americans now say they sometimes or always feel alone. And one in five says they rarely or never feel close to anyone. To be lonely, do you have to be alone? No, because it's about the quality of your connections with people. It's not just how many friends you have, it's about do those friends know you authentically? Former Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Morthy made headlines when he called loneliness an epidemic. He even says loneliness can be fatal. The increased mortality associated with loneliness is equal to the increased mortality we see with smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Oh, it's, come on. Yeah, and you know what? It's in fact greater than the mortality associated with obesity. It doesn't matter who you are or even how old you are. The assumption that many people often have is that it's older people who are lonely, but it turns out youth and young adults who may have the highest rates of loneliness. You think younger people may be more likely to be lonely than older people? That's what some recent studies have in fact indicated. And especially among millennials, the ever-present phone may in part be why. These are the people who use the social media the least, over exactly. here the most. And look at this. I mean, this is amazing. The higher it is, the more your odds of feeling lonely. Dr. Brian Primack at the University of Pittsburgh heads the Center for Research on Media Technology again. and Health. He says the more social media we use, the lonelier we are likely to be. This is totally counterintuitive. Say I have 3,000 Facebook friends. Why am I lonely? One is this idea of social comparison. People are able to take three, four hundred pictures of themselves and post that one that makes them look like they are that much more thin or that much more attractive or that much more successful. The impression from the outside can easily be on social media, wow, I can't measure up with my very normal life. We interviewed a professor who believes that social media has contributed enormously to people feeling alone. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that. Someone said just recently to me that if you have four really good friends... <laughs> you're lucky. You're, you're a lucky person. As opposed to 4,000 likes? 4,000 likes. You know, it's not new that technology is in our homes. Radio was in our homes. Television came in our homes. 
How is this different? I think with regard to things like radio and television, you still can think of them as a little bit more of a social experience. You're not going to be gathering around my Facebook page. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Whether or not social media is to blame, loneliness is not unique to this country. The UK government has now developed a minister for loneliness. You're you know, kidding. No. And what they, does the Minister of Loneliness do? Well, the Minister of Loneliness tries to figure out why people are lonely and then figure out what kinds of interventions might help smooth that out. Sounds like a lonely job. <laughs> If the U.S. had a minister of loneliness, psychotherapist Tracy Rubel might be it. I believe that everybody gets lonely, period. With that in mind, a few times a month, Rubel and her team set up impromptu offices on the streets in San Francisco. You want to be listened to? We're a community listening project. Have a seat. Thank you. Hi. They sit and listen to total strangers for free. When you first proposed this idea, how did your colleagues react? <laughs> they thought it was crazy. But four years later, her project, called Sidewalk Talk, is 3,200 volunteers strong in 48 cities around the world. But most people would think that, well, I don't want to tell a stranger. That actually people open up to strangers more easily than they do to people they know. A few months ago, I had a young guy sit down. And he said to me, I didn't realize, he was just fresh out of college, that work was going to be like this. That I would sit in a cubicle all day, looking at a screen, talking to no one. And he didn't say anything else. He just sat and cried Ooh. for about 10 minutes. And then he said, huh, great, I feel so much better, thank you. <laughs> and then he left. Which do you think is lonelier, to, to be with people and not feel that you're fully communicating or to actually physically be by yourself? The loneliest that I felt was when I was with someone, but I was still lonely. John Francis started talking again in 1990. That part of his personal journey, he says, was over. I climbed a mountain, and at the bottom of this mountain, I was lonely. And on the way up, I found that, no, you're not lonely. You're just alone. Mm -hmm. It just turned into solitude. And solitude was something that you, you craved, you wanted, you, you looked for. Inspired by nature from early on, today, at 72, he's an environmentalist, an author, and remarkably, journey, a compelling I, I a public speaker. I said, thank you for being here. My mother, out in the audience, he jumped up, hallelujah, Johnny's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get lonely today? I got a wife and two kids, and I don't think so. <laughs> It's the sort of happy ending that all the folks we met would like to see more often. Our social connection is the foundation on which we build mm -hmm. healthy and fulfilling lives. I would like people to start to notice how much they need actual connection. We need vitamins, we need vegetables, we need clean air, and we need connection.